<laughs> okay. Um, so the next chapter is carboxylic acids. And so we're going to go through. Um, here, um, so here is the outline of the chapter stuff in in Top Hat. Now I updated the website and I did put the problems that were due today from the ketone aldehydes chapter. There's only four problems for amines to do. So once you're done with those, which are due next week before the exam, you could probably start on these ones because we're getting close to the end. Um, so you can read through the nomenclature, how to name them, and commercial sources. We always start with synthesis, and it's always a review. So let's see how well you do at reviewing. Oxidation of aldehydes and primary alcohols to make ketones. What's that? That's taking either a primary alcohol or an aldehyde and oxidizing that up to a carboxylic acid. What reagents can I use to do that? Zach, Zach, you got a reagent. Oxidizing reagent. KMNO4. What else? Amelia Almaty. Well, what goes with KMNO4? Any of the chromium 6 plus reagents? CrO3 and sulfuric or K2, Cr207. Any of the hard oxidizers will take a primary or an aldehyde, primary alcohol or an aldehyde up to a carboxylic acid. So then I need to ask the question, what will not work then? What will not take these all the way to the carboxylic acid? Amanda Kocher. PCC. So the ones that will not work are PCC, Desmartin. Starts with S. Swern. Any of those will not work. Okay. All right. So there's so there's a review number part number one of review. Oxidation of alkynes to give carboxylic acids. And I like to lump these together both as uh, carbox as alkynes and alkenes. So the question is, if I had this alkyne. And I can put another R group over here. And I want to cleave that double bond, or cleave that triple bond, and make two carboxylic acids. What should I use there? Casey Lindstrom. I need something to cleave this in half. No, I need a strong oxidizer. We could use KMNO4 again. We could use chromium 6. <coughs> 
but KMNO4 under acidic conditions would be what we would what we learned about back when we started with alkynes. Now I don't know why they why they just say alkynes cleaving because I could do the same thing with well I can do the same thing with alkenes that have an alkyl group and a hydrogen I could do the same thing I could cleave this double bond and form a carboxylic acid out of that so what would I use there Sydney Cello I need a I need a strong oxidizer okay, MnO4 would work <coughs> and acid right because KMNO4 in base adds two OHs now there's another set of reactions that I could do that would cleave the double bond as well we could use ozone and H2O2 so we could do ozonolysis on the double bond and we would also get carboxylic acids okay so that's not too bad so far uh, let's see oxidation of alkyl benzenes so I want to take an alkyl benzene and I want to convert it to a carboxylic acid what should I use there Casey Lindstrom you already got called on so Amanda Soika yeah I don't know why it's I don't know why it says Amanda Want a hint? You can, no, you can do the uh, uh, CL, uh, C O H with uh, I think you want a hint. Okay. Strong okay. oxidizer. Did you want to put a chlorine on the ring and then react it with magnesium? Oh, okay. That would work. That's the next one. That's the next one. So we want to oxidize this alkyl group. So KMNO4. Right. So apparently there's a pattern there. Uh, next, carboxylation of, well, hydrolysis of nitriles, I'll come back to. Carboxylation of Grignard reaction or Grignard reagents. So that means I want to take a Grignard with a negative and then an MGBR or an MGCL. And what do I want to add to that? To make the carboxylic acid. And I can tell you, it's not KMNO4. Sheelan Smith. She was never here. Sam Heaton. How would you use the carboxylic No, I, I don't want that. I want to just put the carboxylic acid. I want the Grignard to come and attack something that'll give the carboxylic acid. Call on a friend. <laughs> then I will. I'll call on a friend. Alex Alo. Do you need another letter? Right. 
carbon dioxide. Right? We make the carboxylic acid from the Grignard and carbon dioxide. Okay. <coughs> Again, these are all ways to make carboxylic acids that are hopefully review or will be review. Well, could they be on the next test? Yes. Just like all the aldehyde and ketone review reactions that are in the chapter that you're just finishing up. We're working towards the final, so hopefully don't let anything escape. Okay. And then hydrolysis of nitriles. Hydrolysis of any carboxylic acid derivative will give you a carboxylic acid. So we'll come back. We'll come back to that, including looking at the mechanisms. So now what we want to do is now we want to look at the reaction of carboxylic acids. So let's start with something like, what can I do with a carboxylic acid? How about this? I can take a carboxylic acid, react it with an alcohol in the presence of sulfuric acid or some acid catalyst, and what do I make? This way, it's just random. Amanda Soika. No, you are. You, we've got to get somebody new. Emily James. You're new. Close. What did we do in lab? What did we make in lab? What kind of esterification is this, Emily? You remember what kind, what name it is? It starts with F. Fisher. Fisher. So this is Fisher esterification. And we did this both with the benzocaine synthesis as well as getting your getting your unknowns. Right, so what's the mechanism of this reaction? Now, those of you in Dr. Simmons's and in my lab, I asked you to write this out for the report, but let's go through this. Let's go through it step by step. So, I'm going to take the um, acid catalyst, and what am I going to do with it? We're going to go through step by step. So what's the first step in this mechanism? Anthony Dedick. First step. Carboxylic acid plus H plus. Which one? Okay. I'm going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen. I will come back and show you later why I can't protonate the other one. So I'm going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen to form an oxonium ion. Okay, next step. Josh Hughes. He's not here. Sad. Emily James. Josh Hughes. <laughs> Can't I mark them off somehow? Zach Twin Alex. Let's keep going until we find somebody who's here. Spencer. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I've protonated. And what do you want to do with that? I'll give you a hint. Alcohol. What, what do we want to do with that alcohol? Uh, put it on the 
Yeah. <laughs> I only made it that I'm far. Like, like that? Yeah. Okay. And then, Next step. Let's just keep going around. Kevin. Um, the H on the OR plus will lose. Okay, lose the H plus, which is the catalyst. Okay. Okay, so I'm sending it that intermediate. Continue to go around to sauna. What should I do next? Which oxygen? How come not the side OH? Does it matter? No. As long as I protonate an OH. If I protonate an OR, what happens? I'm going backwards. So let's go ahead and protonate an OH. Okay, so now I've got my another oxonium ion. Okay, so now we go next. Nicole. Let's let let's get rid of the water. And this may look like a, a really unstable carbocation, but with each of the two oxygens that's attached to it having the ability to form a double bond with it, it's actually pretty stable. Okay, so now final step. Shannon. Well, I, my goal here is to make the ester. So while this looks like I might, might be making a um, acetal or a ketal, I've got an OH here. So I want to form the I want to form the double bond between that carbon and oxygen. Okay. How about we move this pair of electrons there? from the hydrogen. So I'm going to regenerate the catalyst and now regenerate the double bond so that I've got my, sorry, OR group over here on this side. So there's my ester. <coughs> so that's the mechanism. Now sometimes what you'll see and you'll see it in the, in the mechanism that was in the handout that, um, that Dr. Sim, for Dr. Simmons in my lab was, if you can take this pair of electrons and move it here and then kick the water off, that's okay as well. Because I'm not sure if that occurs or if we really do lose the water molecule. So... Either, either that step to form the final product or this step to form the final product is fine with me. Okay. So there's our mechanism of Fischer esterification. What's the issue with Fischer esterification? The issue is this is equilibrium. And so in order to push this equilibrium to the right, I need to use an excess of one of those two reagents. Probably the carboxylic acid, because I could take the carboxylic acid like we did in lab, treat it with sodium bicarbonate, which would then deprotonate the excess carboxylic acid and pull it into the aqueous layer. 
So that's the difficulty with Fisher esterification is you need an excess reagent. Now, if I don't want an excess reagent, I could think about other ways to make esters from carboxylic acids. So let's start with this one that people used on the exam. They converted the carboxylic acid into a carboxylate, and then they added something like methyl iodide, methyl chloride, methyl bromide to it, and basically did an SN2 reaction to form a methyl ester. So that's kind of an SN2 mechanism. My question is, how do I make the carboxylate? And since we've been around the room once, time to start over. Dylan Ramsey. So give me a base that I can use to make, convert the carboxylic acid to carboxylate. So NH2 minus and N minus. Overkill, but will work. Jennifer Zacha. Casey Lindstrom. Another base. So far, we've got an N minus. Not quite, not quite strong enough. That would be the same. An N minus would be the same. I need something other than an N minus. So N minus is a strong base. What else is a strong base? Your friends that will help you, maybe. C minus. C minus. Overkill. What would work? Were you going to say, what were you going to say? An AOH, not overkill, will work. What else? H minus, overkill, but it'll work. So N minus, C minus, H minus. What goes with NH2 minus? What's the counter of that? Nope, that's only for an alcohol. NA or potassium only works with alcohols. So when you're doing E2 reactions, NH2 minus and Ariana? Torch butoxide will work overkill, but it will work. I'm one base short that I just said less than two minutes ago that I could use to extract the carboxylic acid, the excess carboxylic acid into the water. Sodium. Bicarbonate. Carboxylic acids will be deprotonated by, car by bicarbonate. So something strong all the way to something more moderate. That's how I can deprotonate that. <coughs> there is a problem. Methyl iodide is not a good reagent. It's probably, well, it's, let's see, if all of the, it's, is it teratogen? Yeah, probably. Um, teratogens are basically cause birth defects. I oversimplified that for my Japanese TA, Mr. Sato, in when I first started teaching at Kansas State, and 
he went around the lab asking if they if they thought it would produce monster babies and I just I'm like no that's not the definition of a teratogen although it kind of works um, the problem is methyl iodide will undergo um, SN2 with anything so if it gets into your skin into your body then you're just going to start methylating stuff which is never a good thing to methylate proteins and DNA and all of that so it's it's a tad bit uh, toxic so are there other ways to do this yes the sort of historical method to make methyl and and I should let me come back here for a minute so this really has to be a primary halide and it can't have much steric bulk to it for this to work so primaries are the best the normal the, the original historical way of making methyl esters is to use um, CH2N2 which is diazomethane and for diazomethane basically what you have is it's a CH2 double bonded to a nitrogen double bonded to another nitrogen so if we look at the formal charges the um, central nitrogen is plus one the N nitrogen is minus one and so what we can do is when we react our carboxylic acid with diazo with diazomethane it's the the book goes through a mechanism I'm not quite sure that the book's mechanism is kosher but what they do is the CH2 reacting with this will eventually make a OCH3 so this CH2 will pick up a hydrogen from the oxygen but more importantly that N N combination becomes a very good what kind of group it's going to make an N it's going to be make an N triple bond N so it's going to become a very good what yeah. leaving group it's going to become a very good leaving group so the only the only difficulty here is obviously I'm making diazomethane a molecule with a gas molecule in it right what happens to those whenever you make a molecule with a gas molecule embedded within it if you're not careful it explodes and it's not very stable so what we have to do is make the diazomethane and then immediately react it and there's actually glassware specialized glassware that work for that but it's probably safer than trying to use methyl iodide so that's a way to make another way to make methyl esters now I was gonna if I remembered I was going to show you for a carboxylic acid why my H plus is going to add to my carbonyl oxygen and not my OH okay, and since nobody reminded me I reminded myself what would there's another resonance structure for this and that is to take this pair of electrons move here and move that pair of electrons to the carbonyl oxygen so it turns out that there's two resonance structures for this now this should be an R and here are the two resonance structures so the carbonyl oxygen with a negative charge and the OR group with a positive charge 
Now, that's not a very big contributor, but it still is a contributor. So when I write the resonance hybrid for this, and I put in the charges, it's going to look like that. <coughs> so if you're in H+, plus, which oxygen are you bound to react with? one with the, Gavin? The delta minus. The delta because it won't react with the delta positively charged oxygen. So we never protonate, actually, it could be either an R or an H. We never protonate the OH in a carboxylic acid we never protonate the OR in an ester because of that, because of those two resin structures. All right, so that's why we have to protonate the carbonyl oxygen. All right, so ways to make esters. Oh, I have one more way to make an ester. Review. A review. Convert the carboxylic acid into a carboxylic acid chloride. React it with an alcohol because then that will go 100% to form the ester. So I need my reagent to make to convert the RC double bond OOH, the carboxylic acid, into a carboxylic acid chloride. Anybody want to volunteer that one? No. HCl I cannot use. No. SOCl2. What's what does SOCl2 do? It only does one thing. Converts an OH into a Cl. But with SOCl2, there's also P, PCl3, P, PCl5. Any of those reagents convert OHs to Cls. That's their job. So I can convert the carboxylic acid into an acid chloride and then immediately get 100% yield. Okay, so that's the ways we can convert esters or carboxylic acids into esters. All those different ways. <coughs> Now it is possible for me to react a carboxylic acid with a carboxylic acid chloride. And what would I make there? Okay, what's that? Well, I know what it looks like. It looks like that. Nope. It's an anhydride. And we used an anhydride in our benzocaine synthesis because we reacted nitrogen, the NH group, with the acetic anhydride to convert the NH from an amine to an amide. Okay. Now, 
how would that mechanism work? And the action is going to take place at the acid chloride. So can somebody suggest what I should do first? No, eventually CL's a good leaving group, so it's going to come off. About that. The OH of the carboxylic acid acts as a nucleophile to add to the acid chloride. So writing the acid chloride out, it's going to look like this with the Cl. And then down here I'm going to have my OHC double bond O R plus charge. So the carboxylic acid can act as a nucleophile and add to the carbonyl of the acid chloride. What happens next? Dylan? Okay. And then what happens? Lose the H plus, and I form the anhydride. And we've done other mechanisms like this. We've taken the We've added Grignards to carboxylic acid chlorides. We've added two equivalents of those. Our thing is, once we form this O minus, it will always try and reform a carbonyl if something can leave. Actually, in this case, either one of these could leave, but the chloride is the better leaving group. So the chloride leaves, and I end up making my anhydride. So I'm going to kind of mix in some carboxylic acid derivatives like anhydrides into this mix. Okay, so I can use a carboxylic acid. I can make an anhydride with the um, acid chloride. Okay, What else can I do with carboxylic acid? Carboxylic acids. Well, let's introduce using Grignards or organolithiums or hydrides. And let's start with what happens when I add lithium aluminum hydride to the carboxylic acid. What do I make on the other side? Give me a functional group. Anthony Dedig. I've never seen it go backwards. What give me a functional group? with an oxygen. Name one. Just name anyone. Huh? 
Help them out. Any functional group with an oxygen. Alcohol. Okay, what kind of alcohol? Primary alcohol. Okay. When we reduce a carboxylic acid, it goes all the way down to the primary alcohol. <coughs> when we oxidize the primary alcohol with strong oxidizing reagents like KMnO4, what do we get? Carboxylic acids. I think that's slide one. Didn't plan it that way, but I think that's what it is. Mechanism for this reaction. Now we're going to do the mechanism. Before we do the mechanism, I need to say one thing. Well, I need to say lots of things. But the first thing I will say is this. Each lithium aluminum hydride can give up four H minuses. So we're going to count them. So the first reaction is going to be the carboxylic acid with H minus number one. And what's going to happen there? Sam? So it's going to deprotonate to form the carboxylate ion. Yes. Okay. Let's take that carboxylate ion and react it with H minus number two. What's that H minus? What do you think it's going to do? So how about it attacks the carbonyl, adds to the carbonyl like any other negatively charged nucleophile would. Okay? Great. So I've now used two H minuses. I now have a deprotonated hydrate. Right? If I put those two OHs, if I put two OHs on here, I would have a hydrate. And the hydrate would be unstable and would go backwards to the aldehyde. But that's not what happens. Because I'm not going to add H plus H2O to this. Yeah. This is sort of magic. Well, it's not really magic, but it's it's a here's a, it's a different kind of, of a mechanism. Normally, I could care less what happens to the lithium aluminum hydride after it gives up two H minuses. I got to care in this case because this is the only way I can get my mechanism. All right, counter ion number one, lithium goes with one of the O minuses. My ALH4 minus has lost two H minuses. It will now become an ALH2 with a plus charge. So my two counter ions are lithium plus, ALH2 plus, except the ALH2 plus, when it's sort of paired up with an oxygen, it's just going to go ahead and form a bond. So I'm going to form an aluminum oxygen bond. An aluminum oxygen bond is very strong. So here's what happens. Take this pair of electrons, reform the carbonyl, because now if I give that pair of electrons to the oxygen, I can now have the OALH2 leave as a leaving group. So I'm going to lose, actually we would formalize this by almost putting a double bond to that, to that aluminum. If you don't like that, I don't know that I like that. How about just one 
O minus, but then the Li plus. So the aluminum's now picked up an oxygen. And I just made an aldehyde. I did this without adding H plus H2O. H minus number three. What's H minus number three going to do? Attack the carbonyl. And now what happens? Nope. O minus is stuck. Cannot. There's no leaving group, so it can't come back down. So what's it do? It just waits until H plus H2O is added. Now I'm going to add my H plus H2O. And now I just made my primary alcohol. So there was a time when I used to skip from this to the final and just say, oh, magic. There's no magic. It just, as these things get more complicated, what we find is that the aluminum-oxygen bond is strong enough where I'm going to lose that as a leaving group. So I'm going to use all three, I'm going to use three of my four H minuses to reduce this all the way down. Now, basically in this system, I can do a lot of things which I will do on Wednesday. I could say, you know, what if I could just add one H minus? And then add H plus H2O to it, what would I make? I would make the aldehyde. Because this is a hydrate, it would be unstable, it would go all the way back to the aldehyde. What if I could add a Grignard to this? Because before we said the Grignard deprotonated the OH. Alright, great. Let's use two Grignards. One Grignard to deprotonate, one Grignard to attack. Now I'm going to have an R group over here with the two O minuses, add H plus H2O, make the hydrate, it goes all the way back. Now I made a ketone. Of course, that's about it because I can't do three grenades. So I'm going to, well, a couple things. When we learned about hydrates and imines and all of those things and how they're unstable and how they go backwards, you cannot forget that. I could say you shall not forget it, and maybe that would help, because shall is always an action verb that makes stuff, you know, shall or shall not happen. We could try it here and see if it works. Next week will be at two weeks before the beginning of the semester, the time when students typically turn tune me out, according to Dr. Weaver when I got here 25 years ago. He said, they won't listen to you for the last two weeks. I came from OU, where they didn't listen to me from week one of ten weeks in the old quarter system. So I was used to that, but I said, no, come on, this is John Carroll University. People always, and he goes, well, everybody's tired. Next week is, this, is, is two weeks, so you've got to fight the urge to tune me out. Because we got some stuff to go over in the last two weeks. Do not quit. If you got senioritis right now, postpone it until your last final exam. If you have senioritis and you're not a senior, you need to get rid of that now. Okay. So that's on Wednesday we'll modify this a little bit 
and talk and probably hopefully finish up the reactions of the carboxylic acids. Uh, there's no homework because you have the rest of the top hat problems due. Oh, for next week. Yeah, for next week. All right, if you have any questions.